Hi, today I'm going to talk about how I made this picture from Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And six years ago, I was playing Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, and I did this project. This is a, a little link here standing in front of the shrine. It's a quilt. And I used my laser cutter to cut acrylic templates, and then I used those templates to make this quilt. And I'm going to put the link for the tutorial about how I did this in this video so you can check it out in case you're interested. But now I'm playing Tears of the Kingdom, and I'm really loving it. I'm almost finished, and I'm going to be really sad when it's over. But, uh, you know, shrines have changed a bit in six years. This is Link in front of a shrine again. Uh, Link has changed. The graphics are just beautiful. There were so many colorful, wonderful images in this game that I could have used for this project. But I kind of liked the continuity of it, picking Link in front of a shrine again. So I'm going to talk about how I designed this in Adobe Illustrator. It's a pretty simple design. There's only three layers here. I'll talk a little bit about laser cutting it and some tips on painting and assembly. And I'm going to cover all of that in this episode. I always use a reference image for my projects. I'm going to create one here by making a composite. I have to add the swirl to the top of the shrine because I already completed it, and I need to extend Link's weapon down at the bottom. I did all that in Photoshop. Now I'm in Illustrator and I'm going to place this image into my drawing. This shrine is in shadow, so I get a second image of the shrine that has more detail so I can use that when I'm doing the drawing. The very top level of the project is just a half inch wide frame around the whole piece. Link is a separate piece. I'm going to just glue him in on the top level. Then I have the shrine level and finally I'm going to have the background. Now everything is drawn just using the pen tool and the red lines are the cut lines and the blue lines are the engraving lines. My last step is to save out each of these layers as an SVG. And that's what I import into Lightburn. So this is what the background looks like. It's one big solid piece of wood and doesn't have a frame. When I get to the shrine level, I have the frame on as well. Though of course that'll be covered by the single half inch frame. That's the final piece. Here's the link cut separately, and as I said, I'm going to just glue him in place at the very end. I used 1 8 inch Baltic birch plywood, and I had some issues with this batch of plywood. I know that it doesn't always cut all the way through, so I've really turned up the power more than I normally would. Here I am doing link. This is at six times speed. It really only takes about two minutes to engrave and cut this piece but I did run into issues cutting through this plywood again. Even with higher power, I had areas like this where it didn't cut all the way through. Even a second pass at the cut line didn't work, so what I do in this case is I take it out, I turn it over, and I use my X-Acto knife to cut through those little bits that didn't cut all the way through. I know I'm painting all this so the smoke isn't such an issue. And this was what it looks like with all of the pieces cut, and I just put them together to see how they look. My painting projects always have three phases. The first is I put down the base paints, then the layer paints, and I finish up with the highlights. I use Citadel acrylics, and the base paints are the most opaque paints. And this is how it looks when you've done that phase, and it's really not very exciting. You just block in these dark colors that represent the basic color of that section. This is how Link looks after I've applied the base paints. Usually the base paints are applied with larger brushes, but Link is so small everything here has been done with small brushes. I've stuck Link onto cardboard using blue masking tape so I don't have to hold him. I usually work from a printed reference and I use good paper and ink to do this so that the colors are really true colors. I'm trying to interpret this picture, not to recreate it. The next step is to apply the layer paints. These are thinner and brighter colors. I've worked at adding texture and detail, but when I'm finished I have one problem. 
the background is too strong in color and it's competing with the foreground and the shrine. So I know I need to knock it back. And the way I do that is by using Lamian Medium, which is a clear acrylic paint that's designed to be mixed with another color to create a glaze. So I mix that 50-50 with a pale blue-gray paint. And I apply it with a pretty large brush over the entire background, the sky and the mountains. You have to be brave to do a step like this, but it really works because we know that mountains are supposed to look distant and you can see the before and after impact of having applied this glaze. Now the shrine and link and the foreground all stand out. The last step is to apply the highlights. I put streaks in the blue and green swirl at the top and I put a lot of gold edging on Link's armor. I decided these lines were too strong so then I used the glazing technique to knock that back. So here's the final result. It looks better in real life because the metallic paints are really nice metallic. The last step is to assemble it and here I am gluing the shrine to the background and I always use these granite blocks for weights. Then I have to glue on the half inch frame and I have that weighted down. The last step is to glue Link into place. I really like the final result and I, I have to say when you spend so many hours of enjoyment with a game, it's great to have a memento like this. I have a lot of other great projects I'm working on for gaming and gamers, 3D printing and laser cutting. If you're interested, please subscribe to my channel.